Hey everyone, welcome back to another Painting with Jay. As always, my name is Jay. So grab some brushes, grab some paints, grab some models, and paint along with me. Let's rid our world of unpainted models, shall we? Yes. Today, I'm going to be working on um, some Deathwing Terminators, for uh, both a combination of the Deathwing Command Squad and the, um, the Terminators from the starter set. So it's going to be cool, the Leviathan starter set. And I'm painting them all in Deathwing color schemes. I'm really deep into my painting project now for, well, I've gotten some good amount of work done for my painting project. I'll do an update video on that in your future, but yeah. So let's get started, yes. Hey everyone, welcome back to another Painting with Jay. As I said, as always, I'm Jay. And today I'm gonna to be working on, as I mentioned, some Deathwing Terminators. Here's one from Command Squad. Um, I have one guy separate out because I'm going to do a quick painting tutorial probably on a slap chop method, but these are what they're looking like. So just as a reference point, I painted these guys a slightly different technique obviously because I painted my Deathwing years ago. My Deathwing painted years ago were basic, like they were very bright and not a lot of detail, but I liked them. They were painted very quickly because I had to paint. I, I did um, several videos with Mini Wargaming at the time for uh, the new, this was like 6th edition Dark Angels. But for this one, I, I want to paint them more gritty. I like that look. So I'm happy the way they turn out, a lot more dark, a lot grittier, uh, and they look awesome. As I said, I'm just painting them using pretty much contrast paints, then I'll do some highlights after and keep these guys looking pretty awesome for now. But uh, look at that. I just, I love them. They look really cool. So today I'm gonna to work on some Deathwing painted Terminators and just really get as far as I can. I'm not really, I'm just going to start painting and keep going until I stop, you know? I don't really know how long I'm going to paint for. To be honest, I bet the battery's going to die in my camera before I'm ready to stop painting. So we'll start with some black. I'm going to just uh, paint this uh, leader guy. Of course, i got to paint the black areas of his armor. So, and his little uh, ear flap things, so cool stuff there. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, I didn't make any videos last week. I took the week off. My brother was in town to visit me. And so I really wanted to take the week and just have a good time uh, with him. It was fun. I haven't had a family member visit me in a very long time, so it felt uh, really cool. Seeing family and talking, catching up. I'm not on, you know, I don't know what the term is, it ends with my family or anything. I get along with them, I just, I don't live anywhere close to them anymore. I moved farther away. And so I haven't seen a family member in a good few years. It's been about three years since I've seen anyone. But it was really cool, seeing them again and catching up. You know, seeing how's life. Um, I got to take, I love, I love when people visit, you know, on my wife's side or I, my side or any side, but, um, or friends or, you know, but it's always fun doing like touristy things in your backyard, you know, in your hometown or your home province and taking people to see the sights. And I, I did that for the week. So I took uh, my brother to the neighboring province for a day, which is cool. Atlanta, Canada is just so beautiful. In the summertime, of course, one of the days we got a, the remnants of a hurricane. We just got the, the rain part without the wind. So that day was not as fun. We kind of just chilled here. You know, I love the way the contrast paints work on these models. They look so nice. They dry so clean. This is a Black Templar. I have, I'm going to do a quick video in the near future comparing Black Templar to Black, um, what's the other one? Black Legion. Yeah. People keep asking for contrast videos, so I'm going to keep making them. I'm really happy with the way this guy looks. So, today we're just going to work on some Terminators. As I said, my goal is to have all these guys, at least the... Um, Maybe next week I'll work on the banner, but the main bodies are going to be painted up this week before I, um, yeah, that's it. I want to keep going. Luckily, 
I'm slap chopping and I'm I'm painting Space Marines. So it's not the the hardest challenge. I like this. My goal is to have all of my at least all my troops or you know all my my infantry models and stuff done by um, pretty much the end of November uh, October. So maybe by Halloween, I will have them um, all done. By the way, Adam. Yeah, Adam. You missed a spot. Right there. Yeah, Adam, Adam, you missed a spot. I'm just going to wipe off a little excess here. Um, yeah, Adam, you, you missed a spot. You're welcome. No problem. Oh, Adam. Always missing spots. You know, but that's what Adam does. Deblet, thank you, by the way, to Deblet for letting me know I missed a spot the other day, the last video. So, I appreciate that as well. Because I don't want to be a hypocrite here. Like, I appreciate you all calling me out to miss my spots, you know. That's, that's only fair. Because I keep Adam um, accountable. So I need you to keep me accountable. Look at that. Looking good. Looking good. So now I'm just going to switch it up. I'm going to go to the reds. Keep working on the reds. I've been working on the reds for a little bit already, as you're going to see. But I uh, I love painting with contrast paints. So there's some Blood Angel Red. Yeah. I love it. I love slap chopping these models. I just It feels great. It's such a fun, quick process. Uh, the task doesn't seem anywhere near as daunting when you're slap chopping. And you know what? It's not the highest standard, but then what I do is I, um, I, hmm. whatever, I'll paint this red for now. So, because I'm going to be painting met metallics over it anyway. I haven't, I haven't, it took me a little bit more of time to get um, back to getting used to uh, the painting with Jay style of painting at a very specific angle. It's pretty funny. Yeah. So I'm just going to put some red on him. paints doesn't seem anywhere near as daunting of a task. I love it. You have a quick sense of accomplishment. And the, it, it brings the models to life so quickly. I think it looks decent. You know, and I've noticed that and I do, I, I give credit to contrast paints. I think in a way that they've, like when you go to the tournament now, you notice that more armies are painted to a slightly higher standard, I think, than they were. Like, I, I go to, you know, like I used to go to tournaments and people, like especially the hardcore, when it all cost gamers, would just have barely painted models. And now I've noticed that the armies are a lot more painted, which is cool. And I think contrast is the is one of the contributing factors. I really do, because uh, contrast paints just make things easier. You know, I don't think um, I honestly don't feel mo armies are painted to the same. Like the high end models, I've noticed less high end armies to be at tournaments. To be honest. Leave comments in the comment section now. What do you what do you guys think? Do you notice that? What effects do you have lately on, on you know what effects have you noticed on tournaments? Like if you go to a tournament, I notice less less low end, so like no like a lot less three color minimum armies. And and you notice like there's a bunch of like slap chopped armies, which is cool. And the other thing I've noticed is a lot is in some cases less high end as well. So maybe just more people are painting to a middle tabletop standard, which is cool. I'm okay with that. You know, I ain't judging. This is what I paint to. Cool. Look at that. Look at that. Looking awesome. I am 
Any other symbols? Nope. That's gonna be gold. Good. Let's see here. This apothecary, I'm going to be painting the face later white. So I'm gonna back off that one a little bit. Um, so I won't paint the face on this guy yet. I should have maybe painted, maybe I'll paint gray faced in a second, the, uh, the white, apothecary white, and get uh, that done. Yeah, let's do that. So I'm just gonna finish the symbol, because I started it. Always finish what you start, especially when working with contrast paints. And yeah, look at like I've noticed that it's it's but it, I'm happy with this. I feel like more members of the community are ridding their world of unpainted models. I definitely have more models <laughs> right now to paint than I did at the start of the year, and that hurts my heart a little. I was working hard, knocking out squads, and then I decided to give my Dark Angels a glow up. Right, and so I that added 50 more Space Marine models, and there's of course a new codex coming out soon for the Space Marines, and the new models look pretty cool for most of them. I'm gonna stop the red for just a moment, paint the apothecary white, and yeah. So I added. You know, 50 more Space Marine models to my painting pile this year. I added like 50 more um, Tyranid models because of the Leviathan box set. And uh, I've already got a couple questions. Am I going to be picking up the new guys? Mm, maybe. Look at the separation on that. I'm just going to run this under the. Uh, I love my Vortex Mixer. It's my favorite thing. You guys hear the Vortex Mixer going? Wow. Get a little more shake. Shaky, shaky, wakey, wakey. There you go, much better. Good. What was I saying? I don't even remember. I'm just gonna give it a bit of quick dry brush after to uh, make it more white. It's a little warm in here and it's a little too warm on this model so it's gonna like mute ah oh, whatever it'll still have the white tint to it and then I'll give it a quick you know dry brush or maybe a, just an edge highlight with some uh, white after to uh, to cool it down a little Alright, so let's go back to uh, reds. I have no idea how I'm going to paint up here. Paint up his arm as well. I don't really know how I'm going to paint up this guy, to be honest. Mm, we'll see. Oh yeah, the new uh, the new models for Space Marines are looking awesome. The new Tyrion models look cool too. I really like the Biovores. They're such an outdated kit before, and so they, they definitely feel a lot more Tyranity, more um, in line with the rest of the Tyranid army. I find, yeah, definitely compared to uh, what it was like before. Let's throw in the model that I just painted. So I really do like the look of the Biovores, of course. New Biovores, new great rules. There's that 
harvester detachment that I uh, talked about in my review. It's an interesting detachment. I don't think I'll be using it very often in the near future. I think I'm going to try the Endless Swarm as my first one when I play Tyranids, which could be a while because right now I'm on a uh, Gene Stealer Cult high. I think if I play in a tournament, I'm going to bring Gene Stealer Cult as my first army my in my first tournament in four. 40k 10th edition. Yeah, I think so. We'll see. Maybe if the Dark Angels are painted up by then, maybe I'll play Dark Angels. I don't have to win this tournament. I just really want to play Gene Stealer Cult because I have never gotten, I've never played Gene Stealer Cult in a tournament before. I've played Dark Angels in a tournament before. Oh, which that drives. Cool. Go ahead. So yeah, those are the reds. Look at that. I'm I'm really cruising along here. I'm gonna paint some silvers now. Belcher. Grab some lead belcher. And let's paint up some metallics. Oh, I didn't paint the red on. <sighs> I missed a whole model, not even a spot. Come on, Deblet, why didn't you call me on that? Um, let's paint him up first. I haven't decided yet. I have a tournament that I really want to play coming up in October. There's one in a few weeks. I just don't think I can get there on that day. We'll see. You know, there's the tournament scene is now really starting to take off in my, not my area, my province, but the, you know, nothing's that far away. It's like an hour and a half away for a lot of these places, um, which is really cool. I really want to do a tournament in the near future, just to go meet people, play against some games, play some games against armies that I don't normally play against. I still have not faced Votan, for example. Which, to be honest, I don't think I'll be facing much Votan in this tournament if I played in a tournament anyway, because yeah, you know what I mean? I don't, I don't, I don't think so, but we'll see. Maybe, you know, a bunch of Voton players will show up and... Go from there. Yeah. Some face of Voton. Cool looking army. Not a big fan of the rules of this edition. Um, I haven't faced Eldar yet. Not in this edition. Countless times in the past. So yeah, my brother came to visit me. Let's get back on that. And I took him. I, I took him all around the province, and we had a great time. I love doing as touristy things. Sometimes it's kind of fun doing touristy things in your backyard, uh, per se. You know, obviously not real backyard, but yeah. I took him whale watching. I love whale watching. I love whale watching. It was really cool. Like how often do you? So it's actually not that far. It's only like an hour. Uh, 45 minutes away from my house and you go whale watching it's a bit expensive but you know it's a great 
once in a long time thing. I've been for we do take it's one of the first things we think of when we take pe- when you know people come to visit us. So we do go frequently. I've been whale watching, I believe, six or seven times since I moved out here. But it's fun. Again, like how often do you get to go and see whales? In your backyard, you know? It's really cool just seeing them in their natural habitat is just phenomenal. You know? They're such insanely cool creatures and it's just awesome to go see them in uh, in their natural habitats there we go look at that now that he's done go to the next color the silvers so far 20 minutes in so yeah I took whale watching now the previous times I've gone whale watching um, there's a lot of there's a lot of small whales in this area called minkies. They're minky, M-I-N-K-E, I believe, minky whales. And they're cool. They're the, um, they're like filter-feeding whales. You know, they're a member of the, fam- the baleen family. And they're cool. Um, but they're small. They're, they're small creatures, right? They're not very big. I'm just going to put that there so that I can, my palette here, I'm afraid I'm going to knock it over. So they're not very big. But they're cool. Like you see these whales, and, and there's also porpoises and dolphins and eagles and cool stuff. But the whales—they're not very big, but they're cool. Like I said, they're whales. It's not very big whales. And you go, okay, that's really cool. And then the, I saw the first time I went, I saw just minky whales, and I was like, all right, that's really cool. I saw whales. You know, they were bunched and they were curious. And they come near the boat. Obviously, there's a lot of rules because the point of this is tourism, but it's ecotourism. And the whole point of it is is conservation and protection, and the funds actually like the one the one ship I support is um, they they use the money for like research purposes and they're part of them of the marking programs of these whales and the conservation programs of these whales and it's really cool. They know a lot. And they're they're all zoologists or marine biologists, I guess. But uh, just they look you know it's so cool. And so we went and saw Minky Wells the first time, like, that's really awesome. And then the second time, and the third time, and the fourth time, and the fifth time. Yeah. I've gone too many times, I think. Whale watching, which I... Um, we saw Minky, and then we also saw these whales called finback whales. Uh, they're also known as razorback whales. And finback whales... I feel like this is National Geographic. This is cool. Um, this, this, um, I don't know what I'm going to title this video. It might be, Can You Speak Whale? We'll see. So, finback whales are one of the biggest whales in the world. They're one of the biggest mammals in the world. They're the second biggest whale species to the blue whale. The only thing about finbacks is a very small amount of the finback actually goes above the water. So it's very hard to perceive, I found. The first like time I saw them, I didn't know how big they were until all of a sudden you get a little closer and you can kind of pick up that, you know, like that Jaws moment, you're going to need a bigger boat, or sorry, uh, yeah, you're, you're going to need a bigger boat, I'm pretty sure is the expression, because I think the miscommunication is we're going to need a bigger boat. I think it's, you're going to need a bigger boat is the correct saying. Correct me if I'm wrong, people. In the comment section down below. Misheard movie quotes. Um, so, you get close to them and all of a sudden you realize that this whale is, in fact, bigger than your boat. Like, they're, they're big. Um, and the ones I saw were full-grown. And they're just, they're huge. You just don't see it. They're not the most... Um, they're not the most picturesque whale because in Canada, of course, we also have humpbacks, depending on the time of year. And I've never gone at the correct time of year to see humpbacks. I always miss the humpback season by like a week or two. Like, no, we haven't, I get there and like, they, nope, they haven't seen the humpbacks yet. Or yes, they saw the humpbacks and they've already come and gone. Because we just catch them on their migration route, right? They're not in these waters permanently. They're just, they're here at the moment and then they're gone. Right? And obviously, like, when they're gone, they're gone. And then they'll come back again next year. And so the, 
the humpbacks are, are the more picturesque, you know, fun Canadian whale, I guess we say. I know they're not Canadian, but still. Um, they just, you know, they do the tail thing, and they can breach and jump out of the water, and they tend to be more playful, and, like, they're the ones, everyone's always like, oh, I want to see a, fin um, a humpback. And so my brother, when we took him, we were like, okay. And I follow this, this group on Facebook, and I knew that there were humpbacks in the area. They saw them as, um, about a week earlier, and they're usually here for a few weeks, like three or four weeks usually. So they're in the area for sure. And so I'm like, okay. So, and not guaranteed, obviously, because there's never a guarantee that you're going to see a whale or anything. But I was like, okay, cool. This is my best chance of seeing a humpback. And then, so we get out on the water this time. And of course, they always have a mission. They always know where they're going to because they know from like the previous uh, times they went out that, that day where the whales are and they talked to the other boats. The whole the whole group of boating people, they always try to, their whole goal is to have the best experience possible because they like happy people and they like people to give positive reviews and they like, you know, they want to bring positive attention to the, uh, the whale watching industry and they want to give people once in a lifetime opportunities to see these animals. So... When I got when we got on the water, it was very apparent that there was a um, there was definitely a humpback in the area, but we couldn't go see it because there's also um, for each whale there's uh, certain guidelines of you know how many boats can go around the whale at a given time. They don't want to stress out the whale. They don't want to get too close. They don't want to accidentally hit it. Right. It, the whole goal is preserve preservation and conservation, so they don't want to stress out the animal and so we got out there and there were already enough boats around a humpback and I was like oh no because I wanted to see the humpback obviously and so then they kept going I'm like oh come on we can't miss out on the humpback for this reason luckily there was a second one in the area and it was really cool and I've never seen a humpback in the, in the wild um, and it, I got to see my first humpback and so I took it was really cool that my brother was with me and my, and my wife and we um it was just really cool. We had chilled with this humpback for about an hour. Got tons of good looks at it. You know, it did the tail thing. And it was just, it was really awesome. And it was really cool that that was my first day taking my, like my brother was just got there the day before. So we started him out on a great note because he's always wanted to see a whale too. You know, and so we're like, okay, we've already seen a humpback whale. You've been here for less than 24 hours. Great way to start the vacation. And I usually, I'm, I don't know, I'm not, I'm not a foodie by any means, but I have a, a lot of favorite restaurants. And so, yeah, like it's a good excuse to just not buy any food for the week for groceries. And I just took my brother to all my favorite restaurants around the area. Because that's what he wants to try. He said, you know, like, let's what, try the food places. He doesn't, he loves seafood too. And obviously the Maritimes are known for their seafood. It's just, we didn't, uh, you know, it's really expensive and not very fresh where he comes from. So he was really excited to come out here and eat fresh seafood. So again, we went to a bunch of seafood restaurants. That was cool. I, um, I took him to a zoo. It's not a very big zoo, but we went to a zoo. Oh, and the whale watch, let me go back to the whale watcher. So, it was cool. We had a good time. And then, of course, we saw some seals. This one's seals are, are usually my favorite. I'm biased towards the mammals, but the seals are just hilarious because seals are essentially dogs, right? They're known as sea dogs for a reason because they're so playful and curious and they have fun and they play and they, you know. So this one seal, like, popped up right beside our boat with a fish and was just, like, eating a fish and checking out the boat, you know, feet away from us. It was really cute and fun. Uh, it was a uh, harbor seal. no. Gray seal? Gray seal. Yeah, not a harbor seal. The harbor seals were also there, but it was a gray seal. Um, and that was really cool. And again, like, it was just awesome to like, to take my, my brother, my mother as well, one day wants to come visit me, and I definitely will do that with her as well. Because it was just really cool to take my brother on this once-in-a-long-time experience. You know, he's never seen seals in the wild. And, uh, you know, where we're from, central Canada, there's not a lot of places that you can go and see seals in that area. There are some, but you have to go pretty far. And so he 
had a great time. We saw seals and uh, what else? We saw a lot of porpoises, which are like mini dolphins, essentially. They're like dolphins, but maybe half the size of a dolphin. They're not, yeah, they look like a dolphin, but smaller, cute, you know, small, cute dolphins, which was really cool as well. You know, again, the dolphins were really, you know, see, and uh, it was just really awesome. Good trip overall. Um, he really wanted to see a moose, but we didn't see a moose during the trip, and I'm kind of glad. Unless there's a moose at a distance, you know, I don't really want to see a moose. I've, only, I've seen moose rips at the road several times here, and not the easiest experience. Moose are just giant. But, so the day after we went whale watching, um, in the area that we went whale watching, one of the other boats, excuse me, one of the other boats saw a dead minke whale. It was a dead minke whale. And it was floating on the water, of course, and it was dead. They don't really know what killed it. It was dead. And it was floating around. Whatever. Like, people don't go to see the dead minke whale, so they kind of just drove by it, didn't think anything of it. So that was the day after we were there. And then, the next day, after that, again, a different boat, same area that we were in, same whale, of course, that was dead. Uh, they, and this made the news, um, there was a great white shark eating the whale, which was pretty funny, and very, uh, again, nature-esque. So there, somebody filmed it, and it ended up on the news. It actually made the... Um, the Atlantic news for Canada, and then actually made the internet, uh, the cross Canada news, because it's very rare that you know a Canadian films a great white shark eating a whale in the wild. So that was pretty cool. My brother was so jealous though, because he wanted to see a shark eating something um, earlier this season. The group that I I like to support saw a great white shark eating a seal, and that my brother kept joking that that would make his day. If you could see, like, Mother Nature, Shark Week, live edition. So, but yeah, that was kind of cool. Sharks. And yeah, so then I took my brother after whale watching. There's a couple tourist attractions that I, I've done a lot of the touristy things in my province now. And uh, the, other, the neighboring provinces, too. Um, because, you know, it's cool to do. And so I've, I've gauged pretty well. And I'm, I'm, I'm a pretty positive person. I like to remain optimistic and see, try to see the beauty of the instance and think it's cool. But there are a couple tourist attractions that are really, really silly in New Brunswick. Really silly. So, and my brother wanted to see all the tourist attractions, and so we're like, cool, let's do all the tourist attractions. And so we did, Right? Uh, including the silly ones, and I warned him ahead of time which ones were incredibly silly. Like, yeah, there's some silly ones. There's one called Reversing Falls. And it sounds cool. Like, when you hear Reversing Falls, people are like, ooh, that sounds really awesome. And you hear the name, and again, it's on everyone's like top ten things to do in the province. Reversing Falls. Um, but man, you know what's not worth doing? Reversing Falls. Again, I'm a very positive person, but it is pretty boring and lame. So, again, people think of reversing falls like, oh, man, it's like Niagara Falls, which, again, huge tourist attraction. I actually love seeing Niagara Falls. I've been there more times than I can ever count in my life, probably in the 50s to 60s time. Of course, I used to work for Mini Wargaming, which is just down the road from Niagara Falls, or was. I don't know. I've actually not been to their new location. But it used to, they used to be in, I think it's still in Welland. And Welland is the neighboring town to Niagara Falls, Ontario. So a lot of people go to Niagara Falls, like visit Mini Wargaming, they go to Niagara Falls to visit the, the attractions. So Niagara Falls is cool. It's a huge waterfall. Cool, water's falling. I like it. A lot of people are pessimistic towards it, but I like Niagara Falls. So once again, people, getting off topic here, people think when they hear reversing falls that they just... Um, that they, uh, that like, it's like a reversing waterfall, right? Reversing waterfall, like imagine like, you know, Niagara Falls been reversed, water going uphill. Cool stuff, right? That, that actually, this does sound cool. That's not what it's about. So what they call it reversing falls, but it, the full term is reversing falls rapids. 
And rapids is a loose term depending on the time of day. It, it's like a river, basically. And all it is, is that, to explain reversing falls in a nutshell, is reversing falls is a cool phenomenon because in Atlantic Canada, there is the highest change in tides in the entire world, basically. The change in tide levels is huge and very significant, and you notice it wherever you go along the ocean. You know, the Bay of Fundy, it's, it's everywhere. Like, and that's why a lot of the tourist attractions are involving the tides, because it's a natural phenomenon to the area. And so, when it's going towards high tide, the water is rising, and the water rises at such a high rate, basically, that it can override the normal direction of the water. So that the water is going in the opposite direction from where it's supposed to usually go. So, about 20 hours a day, the water's going, you know, that way, like uh, this way, Whoop. and then four hours a day, it's going that way. And that's reversing falls. But here's where it gets not fun. If you take someone there, the person has to understand, number one, which direction is it supposed to be going in relation to which direction is it actually going. And so you really got to take a person there twice, or maybe three times a day, in a day. You take them there at low tide to see the one direction. M near high tide, well, it's when it's starting to fight and you see the actual fight going on or high tide, where it's going the opposite direction, right? And so that's reversing falls. And so, again, my brother didn't want to go multiple times, so he went there once, and it was approaching high tide, but he didn't appreciate the fact that it normally goes in the opposite direction because he hadn't seen it go in the opposite direction. And, and so in the end, it was like, meh. And so I took him there after whale watching, and I did tell him ahead of time, I said, dude, you know, just so you know, it's not anywhere near what people say it is. You're going to be disappointed. He's like, well, I really want to see it. It's on everyone's top 10 lists. I got to see it. So I took him there. And then within like five minutes, he's like, okay, we can go. He was not at all interested in reversing falls. It's pretty funny. It's okay. I was honest though. But I did think it'd be kind of funny. Imagine if I set up like a year, in a, if I knew it was coming like a year ago, it would be evil. It is set it up as the greatest thing ever. You know, tell him well in advance that dude, you have to see Reversing Falls. It's the greatest thing. And then bring him there after building it up for like a year, just to just crush his spirit. That's so mean, but I think it'd be hilarious. Yeah, cool. There we go. That'd be hilarious of a prank. But again, I'm I'm pretty honest, and, and again, I'm I'm pretty positive. Like it's it's cool. Um. Yeah, but like, all right. But so, uh, but as I mentioned, a let me see how this looks. Oh yeah, that really graded down. That that t really did uh, cool the head, and the arm. That looks cooler. Nice. And by cooler, I mean temperature wise, obviously. Um, what now? Let's paint this guy. So I was honest there, but then I also took him to, there's another interesting phenomenon in New Brunswick called, there's a term called a magnetic hill and they exist around the world, I'm pretty sure. They exist around the world. It's not just in, in Canada, I'm pretty sure. And what it does do is essentially it's a hill but it's an optical illusion where the hill is actually, you think you're going, you think you're looking uphill, but you're actually looking downhill. Or vice versa, reverse that. Yeah, so no pun intended. But, um, so you think you're going one direction, but you're actually going a different direction relative to the steepness. And so what you do is you drive along this road and then you park your car. So let's say you're driving, this is him. So you drive along the road, you park your car, you put it in reverse. Not reverse, sorry. You put in neutral. Reverse would be a cheating. So you put in neutral. And again, you think you're on this incline. That, and then all of a sudden your car starts going, and it looks like it's going reverse uphill, which 
obviously if you're neutral, you should not be going uphill, you'd be going downhill. And it's an interesting phenomenon. And so I did it once, I didn't have to pay for it. This time I actually did, I took my brother and we, because it's during peak season, we had to pay, it's only like seven bucks Canadian, whatever. And he really wants to see it. And I was like, okay, cool. And I was like, I was, ex I was expecting him to be disappointed, like reversing falls, but it turns out he really thought it was cool. He wanted to do it again. It's like, oh, because it was just trippy when you're rolling backwards. And it looks like you're rolling backwards up a hill. But as I said, it's an optical illusion. The land, or basically my understanding of it is the land around the hill is giving the impression that you're going uphill, but you're not. You know, and that's magnetic hill. And it's in uh, Moncton, New Brunswick. Uh, Reversing Falls is in St. John, New Brunswick. Um, I also took my brother to the uh, chocolate capital of Canada. You know, that was kind of just show them the factory and, you know. So he's going to the chocolate cap. Now, I do find the Maritimes, Ontario, like in Canada in general, a lot of cities are like quick to like call themselves the blank capital of something, you know. I took them to the lobster capital of Canada or the Maritimes. Uh, maybe the lobster capital of New Brunswick, I don't know. There's just a giant lobster there giant lobster statue. It's like the world's biggest lobster statue. But of course, you gotta ask yourself, how many countries really want to build lobster statues? But it was just cool. And again, like when we go there, it was all tourists. Right? For most of these things. I'm doing the zoo and magnetic hill and everything. It was just tourist after tourist after tourist after tourist. And so it was pretty funny. And then obviously I'm there like from New from the, the same province. And I'm kinda of like the tour guide. as I can. Obviously I save myself as much time. I'm painting as much as I can with a bigger brush that I can paint, you know, neatly. So made that a kill. It's cool. And there's a zoo there. and It's, it's a really kids friendly area because there's like a water park and a, a zoo and uh, an arcade I think and a you know, miniature golf. It's like a whole amusement park. So I took him to the zoo. Again, animal thing going on. Um, what else? So a couple of the other things are very cool and touristy are, um, again, with the tides, is you can walk on the ocean floor. Like the very base of the ocean floor, but it recedes during low tide, and so you can walk up there, and there's some really cool things to do. You can do like sea caves, these things called Hopo rocks, which are giant rock formations, which are formed naturally because the cliffs are basically collapsing. I took him there. He had a great time there, again, just to see the the mat, the beauty of the ocean, and you know, it's so cool. What else do I do? We went to the neighboring province, which was, I said, after the hurricane, and the weather wasn't amazing, but that's all good. But overall, I, I showed him a good time, and that's what I really wanted to do, because I haven't hosted a family member in a very long time, and it was just good, to, as I said, to catch up and see, see him and just give him a break. You know, it's his vacation. He drove all the way out here. You know, he spent like 30 hour, 35 hours of his time driving. Let's show him a good time. And so I really hope he did, and I think he did. Yeah. Summer is over, basically. Back to school has begun. Ouch. It's still very warm here. It's like a very hot day out right now. Unseasonably warm. Weird. Unseasonably warm right now. But it's going to cool down probably next week and then prepare. You know, another probably six weeks I'm going to have my winter tires on. I usually put them on. I put them on myself. But I usually put them on just after... Thanksgiving.
and I'm Canadian. Those of you asking, Thanksgiving is a different day in Canada than the United States. In Canada, it's middle of October. In the States, end of November. Cool. Look at them. I really like these guys. But it is, what I love about these Terminators, Space Marines in general, just there's not a lot of colors. So again, I'm on the metallics already. I'm going to hit them with a non-oil shade after. But that's it. And then they're basically done. Right, so I'm going to paint the, the gold. There's some golds. And then I'm going to do a quick highlight. I don't want to leave them like this. I'm going to paint them. Yeah, I'll paint them with a highlight just to bring out some colors. Quick, you know, edge highlight really makes the uh, slap shot method pop. But these, all the actual models themselves, like all the Terminator parts of the models at least, will be done before next week's Painting with Jay. Um, the only one that might not be done is there's a banner. Haven't started on it yet. That could be, like that alone could be my next week's Painting with Jay. We'll see. Haven't really figured out him yet. I have not painted the reds on him either. Oops. But yeah, him. He'll be my painting project after this. And then I'm just gonna grab another squad. And another squad, and another squad. That's the thing, once you get rolling with Space Marines and Slap Chopping, it actually is a very quick, quick, quick experience. You know, and I, the other guys are good. Like, here's one of my um, Stern Garden. I have it primed head white, painted green already. So again, the main colors, I just have to really do, like there's only three or four more colors to this guy. So it's gonna be a quick process once, uh, for each one, when I when I get started on them, you know, it won't take me very long to finish each squad. I'm hoping to do maybe a squad a week. That'd be a good, um, a good goal. You know, I definitely have more than eight squads though. Yeah, or eight units. But that's just a soft goal. I'm gonna try my best to see if I can finish these guys up by the end of October, by Halloween. And if not, it doesn't matter. You know, it's a soft goal. I don't think I'll be playing them in a tournament. The tournament I've been playing is, is in six weeks. And there's no way I could probably finish up. No, no. I, again, I wanna. I'm I'm rewarding myself for all these guys, and then rewarding myself with the three characters. And I'm painting them in order of least cool to cool. Because I th want my last model in this project to be the lion. And that's going to be my motivation as well. To rid my world of unpainted models. And then I also get to reward myself and paint a very cool model. That I have not assembled yet. I'm sure I've assembled it and that way I can just play in some games. Yeah, whatever. We'll see. Love it. I love the. Oh, see, I missed a spot there. That's okay. Let's stop what I'm doing. Just paint that red spot. That way I won't forget it. I have two dreadnoughts to paint. They're going to take a while. Well, not maybe not that long. Maybe a couple. I said. I'm hoping to put in like an hour night, but the only problem though I'm finding, to be honest, is that now that I'm making videos again, just obviously not as many, well, no, I'm making a good amount, not as, as like during my prime, I was doing five a week, plus the warp, so I was doing almost 10 a week, but uh, now I'm doing three to four a week, maybe five, depending on the week. My goal is just, you know, I made a list and I just, I want to make as many videos as possible. I really have no excuse not to make a painting with Jay every week. So going forward, of course, I'm going to have a painting with Jay every week, except for when I'm taking a vacation and take people whale watching or something. Um, then, no. Maybe I can pre-film a painting with Jay. But it gets me just painting for an hour. But I, I'm finding that now that I'm making videos again, again, I work a full-time job. So I work a full-time job, I eat dinner, I, I hang with my wife, and then at night I sometimes make videos. 
And so I'm finding this is really cutting into my painting time. So I actually found my painting to be slower, despite the fact I feel more attached to the hobby than I have in years. But I think that attachment is because of my connection with the community. Like I, it's honestly what I miss the most about not making videos while I took that break was just not, I felt like I, I, I fell out of the community. And I really, really miss a lot of y'all. You've been such good friends and confidants and we've been painting together. And I've actually gotten a good chance to meet a lot of people. And I missed it. I really missed it. And after Adepticon this year, I went, I really just want to keep being a part of this community. You know? Nothing, nobody understands a war gamer like another war gamer. So, and I know, I know, I'll do a video in the future about what I, what I want to accomplish with my channel again, because it, there's no way I will, I'll be able to accomplish the same thing I've done in the past, but that's okay. I don't have to. Uh, look at him. See, these guys are looking, they're coming along so well. Look at that. That's definitely, like this guy, I could put this on the table right now. If I put this guy on the table with a little bit of basing, nobody could tell me that this isn't, you know, four color, three color minimum. It is more than three color minimum. And this is, this looks awesome. I'm gonna do some quick highlights. I am gonna do some quick highlights and also shading on the metallics and whatever. I'll bring them up and I'll paint the, the bronze right there and cool. But this is really, I've only been painting these guys for a few days on and off. 40 minutes here, 20 minutes there. And I'm already feeling like they're almost done, which makes me feel terrific. Hmm. This dude. Switch up the brushes. But I miss y'all. I really did. And I'm glad I'm, I'm back at least for the short term. I'm gonna keep making videos until I can't make videos anymore. As I said, maybe I'll talk about my plans for my channel in a future video. But it's cool. I'm, I'm, yeah. Look at this, we're at 52 minutes. My goal is an hour approximately per video for Pain with Chase. Just uh, a lot of people said that that was kind of the perfect length. So I said, sure. I don't know what color that one's gonna be. That one might be red. Mm, I haven't decided yet. That's why I, I, I intentionally did not paint that spot. I didn't miss it intentionally, the blood. Oh, sorry, I didn't miss it by accident, the blood. Or Adam. By the way, shout out to Cody Root. I don't know if I've done a shout out to Cody Root yet this video. Cody Root is awesome. Really good guy. Look at that though. Look at that. I'm very happy with how these guys are turning out after the amount of time I spent on them. And I'm, I'm excited to get them done and on the tabletop, in games, in tournaments, you know, I, I'm really happy with, uh, it'd be awesome. And the problem is with the, the amount of models I've purchased this year is I feel like I have to paint a lot of models just to simply uh, break even for my pile of shame, you know? Because again, I've purchased just so many models this year um, for this operation glow up. And the, the Tyranid starts at, oh, and I bought one orc box this year. I bought the orc kit, the, uh, the um, boarding patrol, because just the boss necrot and the um, it was a great deal, you know, for the commandos. So I have 30 commandos right now. 
about snake rot. Orcs are going to be a fun painting challenge when I started those guys. Um, I have a lot of orcs, but there are not a lot of models. <laughs> Sorry, a lot of models, but not a lot of different models, I should say. Like, I have like a hundred of those old plastic Gretchen from second edition. And I'm going to paint them. I'm going to paint them, and they're not... I'm going to batch paint them to death, and I'm going to slap chop them, and I'll be happy. But I have like a hundred of those guys. And so a lot of my time is just going to be those guys when I get to orcs. The great thing about it is I can slap chop them. So that'll save some time. That's that. They represent a significant portion of my painting pile. I think right now I'm up to, with all the recent purchases, including this painting challenge, I think I was up to 250 models total, I think. 50 Dark Angels, about 100 and almost like 150 orcs. Uh, 20 Grey Knights. Yeah. 20 Grey Knights. Um, 30 Necrons. That's about it. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, and then all the work. So. Well, I think that's it for now because I'm out of silvers to paint for a bit. Let's end here. So, that concludes another Painting with Jay. I really hope you enjoyed this video and painted along with me and your world is, you know, looking more painted every day. I'm slowly whittling down my pile of shame, but this year I think it's going to finish net positive for a number of models. Yee, we'll see. By the way, they're coming along. As you can see, the Deathwing are coming along. They should be done before next week, which will be great. And then next week I'll pick up another squad and start painting again. You know, and uh, keep going from there. My goal is to hopefully have these guys done, all my uh, my Dark Angels, at least all the squads done before the end of November. So we'll see. End of October. Sorry. Yeah. So stay tuned for more Painting with Jay. And uh, I really hope you enjoyed this one. Thanks for this Jay saying. Have the painting. With me.